Hey guys, what's going on? Sebastian and Eric here from Amazon Lit. <laughs> Bringing you another YouTube video. We talked about dinosaurs, Africa, Jeff Bezos, Facts. suspensions, Facts. jumping off bridges. Facts. We talked about Mexico. IP claims. Mm. Keepa. Keepa. How the Amazon category managers came and visit us right upstairs in our own offices. Yeah. We talked about so much. Yeah, but you're gonna love the video. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Smash it. Turn on notifications. Stay lit. So Addison Todd says you won't get suspended because you have an Amazon rep. Um, that's not true. Um, if you know anything about Amazon, everything's based on their algorithm. It's like the wizard in the Wizard of Oz. I mean, if you look up articles, the algorithm decides whether uh, to fire people in their at their warehouse fulfillment center level or not. So everything's based on the algorithm, but it is about uh, taking the right protocols, following the right steps and being proactive. Mm. If any issues do come up, you, yes, you're right. Amazon's not gonna suspend us right away for the smallest of issues or even a, you know, anything of significance as long as we're proactive and don't let it just sit beside the waistline. Behind the wayside? I don't know. Wonder by the things. wayside? By the wayside. Why below the wayside. No, no, not the below the wayside. <laughs> by the wayside. <laughs> Uh, how much is mentorship? It dep depends what you're looking for, King of Ecom. Uh, the best way to find out more about it is to DM us, and yeah. we'll, you know we'll provide you with lots of insight. And it so really depends. Options. Yeah, it depends on what you're looking for and where you're at, what level you're at. King of Ecom, you guys inspire me. Can't wait till to kill it on Amazon. I've mastered Shopify. Awesome. Yeah, we haven't mastered. I don't even think you ever sell on Shopify. A uh, little bit, but nothing major. What's your biggest ever wholesale order? Do you know, Eric? Have we ever broke 100,000 in one order? Probably, right? Maybe back in the day with one of the clubs? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably over a hundred thousand dollars. Our yeah, average it, it didn't come. And we've we've had three hundred thousand with that just didn't. But they come didn't come in, in consecutive. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just it just it just gets part <clears throat> partition. It gets. I would say up. our average wholesale order is probably right around eighteen to twenty k. What do you think? I was thinking fifty with our bigger ones. If you just look at our top suppliers, but. Yeah, for, for if you look at I guess. Well, because they ship sometimes two at once. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, probably yeah, why. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, so Sebastian's at 50, I'm at 20, so we'll say it's 35. Money makes money, this is true. PT wants to know if we run multiple accounts. We don't, only other accounts we might run is brands that we work with, a partner with, to help them grow their brand online. But it is not our own account. Uh, that's clearly to grow their account, help them with EBC advertising, and then we ship their brand through our own account. Um, what does he say? How can you run multiple How Amazon accounts? How can you run a couple Amazon accounts at the same warehouse? warehouse. You can ask Amazon to open, that you wanna open up uh, another seller account and get their approval. And what that would look like is you usually have to sell different types of products on those two accounts. Yeah. And you can't cross list those products on the, on the multiple accounts. Right. And then if you're within Amazon's terms of service, they'll allow you. Not everybody, you need to obviously approval by them, but it's a high chance that if you communicate that with them, it's possible. Uh, do you guys use a repricer? Uh, yes, we do, it's our own. Do we feel like the opportunity is diminishing to sell products? Absolutely not. Online is just gonna continue to grow, especially on the global level. We've just tapped the surface on the global level. Uh, there's plenty of countries around the world that love American products, can't get their mm -hmm. hands on it. So there is opportunities on some of the smaller uh, Amazon marketplaces, you know, across seas to, to kind of jump on that and grow that while it's still small. Like we did, you know, on the US one seven years ago. So there was, there was a lot less saturation, but I mean, at, even at this point, if you learn the ins and outs, our company is more healthier today Profits are higher today than they've ever been, so. Mm. 
You know, it's going to be another year where we look back and we broke the records of last year. So mm. what do you do with all your returns? We, we go through our returns and we decide whether we can, it's still sellable or not. If it's still sellable on the Amazon marketplace, we resend it out. Mm -hmm. If it's, if it's not, we might put it on eBay. We might move it to the flea market. We might sell it to our own employees. Um, but there's a couple other avenues we move them. So we obviously, we try not to keep products in here. If you guys follow us, you know how full our warehouse typically is. And right now you can see how empty it is because the majority of our products are in fulfillment centers across the country and we're shipping out another 50,000 in the next week. Any tips on how to open a second Amazon seller account? You got it. Why does everyone want to open up a second account when you could be very profitable and very successful with the first account? Mm. Fear. I think that's why. Yeah. And it comes it's down like, to fear. Yeah. They just, they're, they're scared. But the way we see it was that like, why am I going to work so hard to get reviews on two or three accounts when I can make one monstrous account and become a presence on the Amazon marketplace when people actually shop your storefront on a daily basis and distributors hunt you down. Right. And that's kind of the game for us. Right, right. And there's more buy box opportunity because you have a larger feedback rating, more more uh, orders that have been fulfilled at a higher metrics, right? So, I mean, there's really no reason for a second account. Uh, not for us, at least. Obviously, there are some particular cases where it might be needed, but um, if it's really fear, you gotta ask yourself, if it's fear, then what are you, what are you doing here, mm -hmm. you know? At the end of the day, you're here to either grow something huge or you're gonna be worried that your business is gonna falter one day. And if it's not even big yet and you're worried, wait till you're doing a couple million a month then you'll really be worrying mm. edwin says how do we see our storage fees you want to tell them yeah sure you can go to your <laughs> okay. you can go to your reports tab and then click on payments and then you want to scroll down and i think it says selling fees is that is that what it says on the left for exactly for the storage fee it'll, it'll it, it's, it's a say. breakdown you could hover over it there's like six different line items and you want to hover over the one that says fees and it will say this is your storage fees and then you could click on that total yeah and that it will bring you down. to a following page for your payment for those two weeks and then it will have an actual line item that says storage fees and it will tell you how much you paid in storage fees for those two weeks that that check was dispersed for Absolutely, and if you want to know what your estimated fees will be, you can go to your fulfillment reports, click on monthly inventory storage, and then you'll see your estimated fees based on your average products in stock daily for that fulfillment center. So it breaks it down by ASIN, breaks it down by its cubic foot, and then it also gives you uh, the average in stock. So it kind of helps you get a projection of what your charge will be. Remember what they're showing you will be charged the following month on your settlement check that falls up between the 1st and 15th of that following month. Mm. How much capital do you recommend when starting wholesale? We originally started with about 4,000 uh, and that's a good way to start and then obviously you're gonna want to grow but you start with that you start growing a healthy business and then there's funding you can get and of mm. course after uh, if you have some great metrics and you've been selling for a little bit of time Amazon lending could also offer you something as well obviously in the beginning the rates are gonna be much higher but if you source correctly if you know how to handle your business and you know the ins and outs of selling on Amazon, you'll be able to grow even with those higher rates and then it'll get a little bit easier like it has for us with bank loans. Any credit cards you <laughs> recommend to minimize rewards or to maximize rewards and points? We always enjoyed the American Express Plum Card mm. just because it had like a 60 day grace period and if you paid it off early, it wasn't points, but if you paid it off early, they were actually putting cash towards uh towards the payment mm. so you know let's say you owe thirty thousand, and if you paid it off before it was due they'd give you you know a thousand dollars uh towards that payment so that was always huge yeah. I chase like inc's reasonable too i think it's two points for every uh dollar spent the companies you work with what percentage are brands direct first distributors that's from edwin uh, duraz probably 90 10 90 distributors 10 percent brands 
Mm -hmm. Somebody else asked about, do you need an LLC? You don't need an LLC, but I would highly recommend if you're gonna sell online to, to, to have a business because there's expenses involved and things you could write off that you won't be able to otherwise. So definitely start a business. It doesn't cost much to get your, uh, to get your EIN and get going. Do you guys have external finance? Yeah, we work with banks. What are your best practices for high variation items? Um, Such as, as, far shoes, as shoes and clothes, like items that have multiple uh, child. Yeah, cases. so first thing we check is definitely, are you asking like for how to purchase velocity wise? Probably. I would assume that. Probably. So first thing we check usually at the bottom left, uh, a keeper it will say that, um, I'm not sure what the exact lingo is, but something basically stating that this rank is not specific to this ASIN, it's across the board yeah. or this keeper chart. So what we like to do, and this is like an insider tip, is we'll go through the reviews and I'll see, I'll, I'll go through maybe a hundred reviews and if 90% and if of those reviews are all for that one product, the one variation because it will say a lot of times what product was being purchased then that most likely is the best seller for that variation so i'll do a test order for that specific variation maybe even get one or two other variations that i might see some reviews for and then track real sales data uh social hustle yes we are enrolled in the hazmat program and keto omad and boss lady uh you can dm us for more information about the mentorship uh program is it true that you get up ungated after you make about $750,000? That is not true. Um, there's people that make more that are still gated. It depends what categories you're selling in. You need approval for different categories, approvals for different brands, approvals for, for specific ASINs. And it really uh, depends on your metrics and, and the products you're selling, right? So, Does employing staff let you and your business down much? No. It lifts us up. Yeah, absolutely. Do you do PPC for wholesale and why? If the brand is already established. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. There's different benefits to it. Yeah. First steps you took to scale the business. Opened up an online account with Amazon. Second step is didn't think about it. Third step is took action. Fourth step is took more action. Fifth step is continue to take action. It's all about action. Obviously there's a lot of thought behind it, but the first thing you gotta do is take action. Mm. You have to take action and just be willing to learn because then, then the momentum starts going and then you force yourself to learn. Otherwise, I know plenty of people that have been talking about starting their own business and never do. They just continue to watch YouTube videos. Mm. Absolutely. When did a warehouse come into play? Uh, year one, about six months in. Yeah, we got tired of lugging products up and down basement stairs. So it was time and we knew if we were going to expand to the next level, See, I was always thinking about expansion, never about the fear of, but what if the warehouse closes and what if this happens? Obviously those, those thoughts will come into my head, but I have to negate them and think mm. about the positive. Action is a must. Eat, sleep, Amazon. <laughs> How much were you guys selling at that time the warehouse came in? Uh, I think we did about, at that point we had probably, we we're probably doing about 100,000 a month, maybe a little more. Are you guys into having small products over big, large products? Oh, if I can make money on it, I'll sell a mattress, I'll sell a life-size Tyrannosaurus Rex, I'll sell a package of needles. If I can make a couple bucks on it, I'm selling it. My brother, it is that time. It's a wrap. We appreciate everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday night. Stay lit. Stay lit. <laughs> Dinosaurs and needles, huh? Okay.